and good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Advent. The centering words this morning are, wake up, God is near. Wake up, God is here. Um, so this morning, Nancy Welch, uh, that was appointed to light our first Advent candle, was unable to be here. So Michaelo and Michael and Melino has agreed to uh, take her place in lighting the Advent candle. So if you please come forward. to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad, whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in, we are glad to be here in this community, with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the arms of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's way, and that, that we may walk in God's path. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, and our joy restored, as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Let us pray. God, please break through and open doors to new hopes, dreams, and possibilities for our church and in our lives. And we will surrender and faithfully follow Christ onto the open road adventure of your new and unknown future. We are listening, Lord. May your will be done. Amen. And the song that we will sing for the lighting of the Advent candle will be found in the Faith We Sing, the Sin uh, Black Hymnal Book, page 2090. 2090, and we're going to sing only verse 1 for Light the Advent Candle. to God's mountain. And the mountain of God's, God's glory and peace. peace. Let's prepare for Christ's arrival. The, the birth of, of the, the Prince, Prince of peace. peace. Come, let us, let's worship the spirit of love. 
clothed in Christ's love, we are ready to worship and pray. And the invocation. Draw near to us, O oh God, even as we draw near to you. Open our hearts and our minds to your presence, and wake us up from the sleep and inattention holding us back. Prepare us to receive your love, even as we prepare our lives to celebrate the joy of Christ's birth. In joyful hope we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn can be found in the Blue United Methodist Hymnal Book, page 196. Page 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Our hymn of response can be found in the Blue United Methodist Hymnal Book, 
number page 368. 368, my hope is built. I feel like it's been a while, but it's just been one week, right? With all the holidays and with the Thanksgiving uh, season. So I give thanks uh, to time of gathering. Lord, in your joy, hear our prayers. Amen. Any other joys or concerns? Yes, Linda. Well, my, my family, and they, they left yesterday, or tried to leave yesterday, and they got as far as Wonder Valley Fire Department. And drove to Valley County to the car and got oh. it over the And uh, when they called for help, they were told if they would only put two of them in the car, the rest would have to stand by the side of the road 
the way to live and come to my house and go back. And the man that came to fish along said, oh no, get in the truck, you're out of and all that. And then when he got home, he looked to see what was wrong. He took a picture of the pot that was broken and brought it down to AutoZone, who knew immediately what he needed and gave it to him. He came home and in a half hour had it fixed himself. So God was with him that whole, whole Yes, moment. that whole, indefinitely, yeah. So what a wonderful uh, story and, and of hope and of assurance uh, of Thanksgiving time that you're sharing with us. So. Thank you for sharing that with us, Linda. Uh, Lord, in your joy, hear our prayers. Amen. Yes. Uh, God knows exactly uh, the people to put in our paths in the time that we need it. So I'm hoping and trusting that your son and his family made it back home. Oh, that's right. This morning. Yes. Okay. Well, safe travels to them. That's right. This morning um, as they make their way home back um, after the Thanksgiving gathering. Any other joys or concerns that would like to be shared this morning? And those joys and concerns that are not spoken for us to hear, I encourage you to keep them in your prayers, keep them in your thoughts, keep them in your hearts, and lift it up to the Lord. And so at this time, we've uh, come to our community prayer board. And so each week I mentioned that our community prayer board are names of those who are requesting and seeking for prayer. And you don't have to be a member of the church to be listed on our community prayer board. And so if you know of anyone who is in need of prayer and would like to be listed on our community prayer board, and we don't, uh, we don't, we don't say what the prayer is for, just that they are in need of prayer. And so if you know of anyone, who would like to be listed on our community prayer board to contact our church secretary, myself, or any of our church leaders, and we can get those names listed. And if you know of anyone who's on the list and would like to be taken off our list, but we will continue to hold them in prayer, please also let us know that um, as well, because our community prayer board is updated each week. And so as I read the names on our community prayer board, I ask that you keep these names in your prayers, in your thoughts, and in your hearts. Rod Good, Elnora Solomon, Mary Webster, Charlene Ryan Moore, Julie Pop, Mark Douglas, Lynn Barthel, Alicia and David Blankenship, Carla Karachi, Nicole Howerzow, Phyllis Swinnerton, Dean Hunter, Darian Wolf, Greg Pop, Greg Erickson, Patty and Real Barkle, Jackie Smith, Michael Hawkins, Lorraine Segura, Barbara Wood, Nicole Tomlin, Ruth Kreitz, Lee Bigford, Summer Guerrero, Rita Tomlin, Dorothy Ann Mead, Maricel Vasquez, Beverly Betters, and Gail McCormick. With the Lord, Carolyn Ryan Moore. And so at this time will be a time for silent prayer. God of love and mercy. Thank you for your great gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who fills us with all that we need. 
Merciful God, we are fully aware that not all your children are able to bask in the joy and the peace during this season. We pray for peace within all walls, walls within our homes, walls that surround each city and town. We pray that during the season of Advent, we may usher your promise of salvation into our lives and that we may share the good news of our Savior with others. We pray that the promise of your birth may be the promise that we live in and share at home, at work, and at school. May we be moved to compassion and action in your name, as the names and the situations that are dear and near to us that we have spoken here today. We lift them up to you, Lord, that you may grant the peace, the comfort, the healing, and the blessing that we pray for. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is from Romans 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is. How is it now the moment for you to wake from sleep? For salvation is nearer to us now, that, now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the, in the day, not in revealing the drunkenness, not the debauchery and the lasciviousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. The stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This time we'd like to ask Melino to come forward for the offering plate.
share the ministry that will help the world. Shine your light upon these gifts, Lord, so that they can be fruitful in all the things that we do to continue building your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Does the microphone help? <laughs> um, I just have a couple of things. Um, the coat ministry is still going on every Wednesday. So if you know somebody who needs a coat or what they're getting cold, let them know to come down and pick out whatever they want. Um, also, in December 7th, we're going to open the, the pantry, the church pantry. Right now, I have about $25 of food in the bags. Um, we're ready. We'll see how the demand is to know if I can keep up with that amount of money in each bag. But if there's anybody that has it on their heart that they would are interested in the pantry and having a say in what we put in the bags or how we do it, please talk to me. I'd love to have people working with me. Thank you, Linda. Um, Linda, on the cult ministry, what time? What time are you here? Wednesday night. Nine and twelve. And it'll be the same for the food pantry. Okay. So for those of you, uh, if you know of anyone who is in need of warm clothing, since we are approaching uh, winter, Linda will be here with volunteers with the Coat Ministry on Wednesdays from nine to twelve, and beginning December seventh, our church pantry. Uh, from 9 to 12. Thank you, Linda. And just to add to Linda's um, announcements or reminders, uh, for those of you who are interested in uh, joining the Advent 2020 online study that begins December the 1st, and it's every Thursday, so it's going to be December the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd, and that will be every Thursday at 7 p.m. So for those of you who haven't registered yet, registration is still open. And you can register at uh, the CalPAC, at our conference website, calpacumc.org. And the cabinet, which is made up of the district superintendents, will lead our Advent study this year. So we will not be having um, Advent study for the Morongo Basin. It's going to be as a conference. And so I think that will be really interesting. So for those of you who have registered, I'm happy and glad that you have. But for those of you who haven't registered, there's still time. I don't... I don't think there's a deadline, so you can register up, up until the last day. But that will begin December the 1st at 7 p.m., so that's every Thursday for our Advent uh, 2022 studies. And then my last announcement, so uh, I shared with Yucca Valley, and I'm going to share here with 29 Palms. Um, I did not plan to have a Christmas Eve worship service on calendar this year. And the reason being because since Christmas lands on Sunday, we will have a Christmas worship service on Sunday. And Christmas Eve, um, I figured that's left to you and your families to spend. But if you would like to have a Christmas Eve uh, worship service, then the laity uh, is free to lead. So if you would like a Christmas Eve service, and it doesn't have to be or look like we had last year. Because um, I know last year we had two services, or was it three? Or I, I just know we had more than one service. Yeah. But if you would like to have a Christmas Eve service, then the laity can lead it. Um, Yucca Valley will uh, agree, so they, they will lead a Christmas Eve worship with laity leading. Um, I'll be here, I'll, I'll be in attendance, but that will be up to laity how that looks like on how you would like to lead. Christmas Eve, whether it's a candlelight uh, service, a blue Christmas, carols, and and reflecting, whatever way you would like it to look. Uh, but just know that our worship service on Sunday will be a Christmas service on Sunday. Okay, and then uh, you can contact me or Annie for more information because I know Annie and the worship the worship committee will get together on that as well. Um, are there uh, any other announcements? Annie or Nancy? I need to have a short church council meeting following worship. Okay. A couple of things that we need to uh, settle regarding our uh, COVID. COVID yes, policy. yes. So, church council uh, meeting following worship to go over our church policies um, 
coming in the new year if there's going to be any changes. So church council members, if you can hang out for about 10 minutes after worship, uh, our chair council chairperson uh, is calling a quick meeting. Nancy, did you have any announcements? Uh, we, we're having a finance meeting on Tuesday. Okay. Finance meeting on Tuesday. 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So finance on Tuesday and church council following worship today. And I believe that is all our announcements for now. So I invite you to stand as you are able, either in body or in spirit, for our second hymn. Our second hymn can be found in the Finn uh, Supplemental Hymnal Book, page 2236, In the Faith We Sing. In the Faith We Sing book, number 2236, Gather Us In. 2236. from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. And for those of you who would like to read along, it is printed in our bulletin. And this is how it's written. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. 
For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. These are the stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we prepare ourselves to receive your word, I ask that you allow us to take the word and as we leave from this sacred place, to share it with those that we come across so that they will know your love, your joy, your peace, your forgiveness and all that you do from everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so today's message is titled, Jesus Unexpected. Jesus Unexpected. And so Jesus speaks about something unexpected, about the day when he will return in his divine glory. Up to this moment in chapter 24 of Matthew, Jesus was telling his disciples about the signs of the end of times. Now he turns his focus to the day of his return, quote unquote, as we heard, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. But isn't that something? Isn't that something? I mean, sure, we will be able to see the signs, but the day. The last day will come unexpectedly. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. So fine, how was it in the days of Noah? I mean, imagine the days of Noah, they were eating, as it says in the scripture, they were drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. But what can we read in these few simple words that describe this most tragic time in the history of mankind. And when I say tragic, that can be debatable. That can be uh, as how you interpret the reading for those of us that uh, know the story of Noah and the ark. But on the other hand, these words help us to see the surprising and unexpected nature of the flood and also of the coming of the Son of Man. People were doing their usual stuff, attending to their daily routines, going about their day. Then suddenly, unexpectedly, the flood happened. As if there were no signs, no indications whatsoever before that something like that could happen. The flood caught everyone unprepared for they just didn't see it coming. I mean, yes, Noah, Noah was warning them and Noah kept telling them, but they didn't know when. And so this description almost begs the question, why did God do this? Was that the angry God of the Old Testament? Well, some, some will guess that, well, 
Maybe they need to draw a little bit closer to God. Maybe they need to look a little bit closer at what Jesus is saying. And we need to understand what was going on before the flood. And we can by reading when you get a chance to read Genesis 6. And I'll read just a portion here from chapters, uh, from verses 5 and 6. The Lord saw the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on earth, and it grieved him to his heart. And that's Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. But there's something very uh, terrifying, something chilling that revealed with these simple words. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, but on their own, in their own doing, not relying on anyone else but themselves. And these were good things. Nothing was wrong in their eyes or in their, in their lives. But in a way, this sentence paints rather a nice, harmonious picture. People seem to be happy going about their daily lives as if there was nothing else, nothing greater, nothing more significant than the satisfying of their own needs because they're doing it on their own, giving themselves the pat on the back, not needing anything else to rely on. But when you pair this picture together with every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually from Genesis, then we get a different picture. Not one of the innocent activities anymore, but the obtuse indifference to their creator. But isn't it rather fitting, a fitting description of our world today? Do we not witness these similar activities uh, in our lives, in our communities, in our homes, where people are simply going about their daily lives all in all rather busy trying to satisfy their own needs and wants and desires? I mean, it's normal, right? But at the same time, at the same time, it's rejecting, ignoring, sneering at, mocking the quiet and gentle voice of our Creator and Redeemer as He continually calls on us. He continually calls on us, just as they did in Noah's days. God continually called upon them. But what a chilling strange hold of spiritual indifference and complacencies hidden under the disguise of these ordinary activities. I mean, it's normal just to live about your day, going about your business, and we see it all around us. And there are so many, um, you know, just lives going about their business, as I mentioned, being friendly, being social, being active, being involved, being committed to different causes, and many may actually identify themselves as Christ followers. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Because those are the things that we uh, like to do. Those are the things that we like to give back. But there's just one thing missing. There's just one thing missing that Jesus is telling us, that the scriptures continue to tell us. And that is that there is no place for God. There is no place for the Son. And there is no place for the Holy Spirit, neither in their minds, in their hearts, and in their lives. And, and I'm talking about Noah's days, but also in our time as well. That we find witnessing for those who are doing good sometimes do not focus on God, but they focus on themselves because there is no place, no time, no need, no interest in knowing and being with the one that created us, who gives us life and breath and heartbeat and everything, every minute of the day. 
But just like the days of Noah, we continue to witness this as well. Unexpected. Jesus, unexpected. But how can the flood come unexpectedly? I'm pretty sure there's hundreds or uh, thousands of scientists that can uh, come up with some type of explanation of what uh, happened. But we're going to take it as from the perspective of us reading scriptures. For a hundred years, Noah was building the ark and proclaiming what is to happen. And he did this every day, year after year. And people saw him. People witnessed to what he was doing. So it's not like he was hiding it. But year after year, people saw the next and the next stage. And the next stage of what he was building of this ark until it was completed. And year after year, Noah not only built the ark, but he would speak on behalf of God, calling people to repentance from their evil ways, from their indifference, warning about the day that was coming. And it's not that they hadn't heard it already, it was just that they weren't listening. They saw Noah building this ark, they could hear him uh, proclaiming God's word, but they weren't really listening. And it's not that they didn't know, it's just that they couldn't or maybe care less. Like, why would they listen? Why would they care? Nothing like that had happened before in their time, so how can something like that happen now? I mean, it seemed impossible, so they didn't believe. Maybe they didn't believe that God was that powerful. Maybe they didn't believe that God existed. But maybe, maybe they were just going about their ways because they were living lives of, accordingly to being uh, just normal people. But maybe, maybe they were just laughing about Noah and with Noah's fatherly understanding, as they would say, oh, he's not a bad guy. Oh, Noah's just overly religious, but he's just a bit too much. Or some can say, oh, Noah is just too serious. His faith has made him go crazy. And it was not until the day when Noah entered the ark and they were all unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. So how much, how much like that is also today. How much of Noah's time is also happening in our time? Maybe you too know people who would have a similar sentiment towards, towards you. Oh, these Christian folks, they're not that bad, but they're just too, too, uh, too spiritual for me. Or they, or they take things too literally, or they're just too serious, or they're just too much. I mean, I hear a lot of what people uh, think of us Christ followers, and that's okay. You know, they're uh, you know they're deemed to their own uh, opinions, but the day the day will come unexpectedly, and these are even Christ followers themselves, because of many of us that know that have witnessed, and I know that we are uh, loving friends, but too many times we have been deemed by our own fellow Christ follower friends. But how could that be? How could it be? Because today the gospel of Jesus is being proclaimed all over the world. Not just here in 29 Palms, in every continent, in every country, in every language, and using every possible media, media platform. I think uh, many of you know that if you turn on your TVs, your radios, you go online, God's word is being proclaimed everywhere. It's being proclaimed face to face. It's being printed in every language. And the message from Jesus is printed everywhere. So it is almost impossible 
not to hear God's voice and Jesus' teachings. It's almost impossible not to hear. I mean, we hear it, but are we really listening? Quote, unquote, return to me, my people. Shake off your spiritual indifference. Turn away from your evil ways. Return to me. I am waiting for you. I am still waiting for you. I want you to have you with me when I bring forth the new heavens and the new earth. If only people had ears to listen, eyes to see, and hearts to believe. But most of them simply go on about eating and drinking, about marrying and giving in marriage, until unexpectedly the day will come. And this is why Jesus continually reminds us, therefore you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Sure, we can, we can say even today, maybe, if, if Jesus was to return today, but we don't know. We don't know when he will return. If it will be tomorrow, next week, next month, but it doesn't look like he's coming at this moment. I don't want to be wrong, but I know I can't be right. And even if it's not today, or if it's not this year, probably, maybe, not that soon, but how are we sure? How are we sure? And this is exactly what Jesus was telling his disciples. It will happen unexpectedly. No one knows the day. Nobody knows the year, the month. But I can tell you one thing that we do know. We only know that he will come. We don't know when. We just know he will. Therefore, be ready. Be ready. And some of you are wondering, well, how can I do that? How can I be ready? What should I do? Well, Jesus simply reminded us about the first commandment. Jesus said, you shall fear and love and trust in your God above all things. You shall fear and love and trust in your God above all things. Do this and you will be ready. And this is what we as Christians, as Christ followers, try to do day by day with the help of God's Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because we do try to uh, fear displeasingly and saddening our gracious Heavenly Father, our brother in Christ Jesus. Therefore, as Paul wrote, to the Romans, as we heard earlier from our liturgist Nancy say, we try to lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We do. We try to live honorably as in the day, not by celebrating in drunkenness or not in shamelessness and not in corrupt, not in quarreling and jealousy. We do try. We try to make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And we try. We try by loving our God because he keeps loving us. He keeps loving us each and every day for our Heavenly Father. From his hand, we keep receiving everything that we have and everything that we are. We will continue to love our God, to love our brother Jesus Christ who left his divine splendor to become one of us and exchanged his life for ours, and now he comes and feeds us his forgiveness and eternal life in his holy meal. We will continue to love our God because he dwells with us, and not just dwells with us, but by indwelling in us, he embraces us into this wonderful divine fellowship with the Trinity, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As the Father is in Jesus, as in Jesus is in the Father, as in the Spirit is in Jesus, so what may we also be with them. Therefore, my friends, brothers and sisters, let's be ready. I pray today that the coming of our Lord Jesus is not unexpected for us, and it shouldn't be. 
But instead, the most expected and the most longed for day of our lives. Let us not act unexpected because we know he's coming. So expect it. The day when all our hopes and all our dreams and all our longings are fulfilled by no one else but by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at was expected. May this Advent season be a blessing to you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so at this time, I would like to invite you to stand as you are able for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn can be found in our Sin, uh, The Faith We Sing book, number two. 2091. 2091, the King of Glory comes. And I believe this song is a bit, it's a fast paced song. Um, I'm, I'm, every time I sing it, I'm always behind. So we'll try to keep up with it, but it's a, it's an upbeat song. So. 2091, the King of Glory comes.